A huge controversy has now broken out that between the Kerala government and the Bharatiya Janata Party at the centre. Because Kerala has broken all records of the COVID crisis and otherwise also known as God's own country is now battling not only rising COVID cases, which is the first state to log over 22,000 cases in 50 days, but is also now contributing over 50% of India's total daily COVID cases. Bharatiya Janata Party has been quick to hit out at the Vijayan government. Shambit Patra of the BJP has taken a dig and I quote it here. Kerala model points to relaxation of COVID curbs during Bakarid for spike in cases. So the rise in cases being now put on the festival relaxations by the BJP. Kerala's horrifying COVID spike. Over 50% of India's daily COVID cases. Over 22,000 cases in a single day. Test positivity rate over 12%. 1.5 lakh active cases. A worrying COVID spike in Kerala, breaking all records. God's own country contributing over 50% of India's daily COVID numbers. The state recorded over 22,000 fresh cases on Tuesday. And an alarming test positivity rate at 12.35%. It now has nearly 1.5 lakh active cases, out of nearly 4 lakh in India, triggering fears that the third wave may be already underway in the state. Kerala me 1.2 ke aspas chala hua. Again, it shows that virus replication is going on, chains of transmission are going on. The fresh spike comes after Supreme Court didn't stop state governments three-day relaxations in COVID curbs during Bakri Eid saying the horse had already bolted. The BJP blamed Vijayan government's Bakri Eid appeasement for the COVID surge and slammed past narratives maligning Kumbh and Kavar Yatra. Kerala had also relaxed the number of pilgrims for Sabrimala Shrine. There seems to be no relief for Kerala when it comes to the COVID-19 crisis. On Tuesday, Kerala reported over 22,000 fresh COVID-19 cases the first time in over two months. To be precise, yesterday Kerala reported 22,129 fresh COVID-19 cases, taking the overall active case lot beyond 1,45,000. So that actually is a significant number. And there are a lot of questions raised against the Kerala model, which was hailed at one point of time during the COVID-19 crisis. To make matters worse, the state is witnessing a crippling crunch of vaccines. Crowds seeking vaccines are being turned away from jab centers. There is only 11,000 doses of vaccine available across Kerala, and that too is only or 11,000 doses of COVID shield available across Kerala. That too is only in Uduki district. So there are 13 districts uh, out of the 14 which have run out of COVID shield stock, and there is a very bare minimum of Covaxin sh uh, shots which are available in the rest of the district. So this is how the situation looks like. At the moment, here in the state capital, Health Minister uh, Veena George had actually appealed to the centre for providing more vaccines and she also said that they are still unaware on when they will be getting the fresh lot of vaccines from the centre. The opposition has accused the state government of abandoning the Covid fight. Two districts, Wayanad and uh, Kasargod, they have uh, almost administered the. Uh, they, they, they have they, they have all, uh, already vaccinated more than uh, for uh, those that their age group above 45. The vaccination rate is 100 percent. Day before yesterday, the government um, distributed 4.5 lakhs. After this information was uh, released, yeah. now government is saying that no vaccine is available from the government. Is the so-called Kerala model of COVID fight failing miserably? With Gopi Krishnan, Unnithan and Thiruvananthapuram, Bureau Report, India Today. Now, Bharatiya Janata Party Shambhid Patra was the first and quick to hit out at the Kerala government of Pinarayi Vision. They are blaming the rise of COVID cases on the relaxation for the Bakarid festival. Listen in to this political face-off between BJP and the Kerala government. Kerala may be controlled by the control. 
मगर कहीं ना कहीं कुछ ऐसा हुआ है कहीं ना कहीं कुछ गलती केरल सरकार से हुई है जिसका नतीजा यह हुआ है कि आज पूरे हिंदुस्तान का सर्वाधिक केस केरल से निकल रहा है हाउ टू प्रिवेंट थर्ड वेव इस पर पूरे देश में चर्चा हो रही है और यह चिंता का विषय है ऐसे में वॉट इज द केयरलेसनेस ऑफ द केरल गवर्नमेंट दैट वी सी सच काइंड ऑफ केस लोड राइज I'm going across directly to my colleague Gopi Krishnan Unnathan he is there on the ground to get us the latest now Gopi political face off apart we have the reactions coming you tell us what is the state status on ground why are the numbers increasing what precisely is the defense of the Kerala government because this way or that the government will have to ensure numbers do not increase in Kerala Gopi Well, Pooja, it, it's absolutely right to uh, uh, mention that Kerala is going through a very tough condition in terms of the COVID-19 cases. Yesterday, it reported 22,179 uh, fresh cases, which is the largest in about two months. However, when we look at the test positivity rate, that means the percentage of people who turn positive while we test about 100 sample, it is only at about 12.39. The reason that the Kerala calls this at, as only at around 12.39 is because Kerala, according to the administration, has a medical capacity which can even handle the situation even if the case load goes beyond 20% or even up to 30% because Kerala has done that in the past. So the active case load or the fresh case load of 22,000 is okay. not something that isn't really worrying the health infrastructure of Kerala. But there is a difference between the health infrastructure and the administration. The administration is certainly worried and they are actually grappling for options to yes. try and bring down the numbers and we, we, we can actually say that that is not going to be an easy task for the administration considering various socio-economic aspects of Kerala because Kerala is one state that had a very strict lockdown right from the first wave of the pandemic and it has been trying to ensure that the restrictions remain strict more or less across that, that's the That's important, uh, Gopi Krishnan, time, please keep tracking that. Yes, because what Gopi is telling us is, is very important. These restrictions, remember, was in Kerala becoming the first state to have actually conquered the COVID-19. Now, with a spike again, remember, do not forget the death and devastation in the second wave. The third of COVID wave also coming in. Let's take a look at our next ground report. While public is given constant reminders, requests and asking to be vaccinated and follow COVID appropriate behavior, that's perhaps the word for the Janata. But what are the Netas up to? Remember, the Netas appear to be flouting COVID norms one by one. Take a look at this. Rajasthan Health Minister Raghu Sharma, who is tasked to lead state's COVID fight, himself flouting the norms on his birthday party. COVID norms thrown to the wind. Minister's birthday bash is on. This as Raghu Sharma was seen celebrating his day amid a huge crowd applause. As you can see, very clearly, no social distancing. People, most of them not wearing a mask. All COVID safety guidelines thrown to the wind as if there is no COVID pandemic at all. Some sensible ones, yes, I can see there, are wearing a mask, ensuring that at least they and their family members stay alive. This comes at a time when the Gehloth government is constantly otherwise sending out repeated warnings to the public to follow the COVID guidelines. But the question again remains, people who are supposed to be leading by example, are they failing us? Because this is one of the own ministers of the Gehlot government in Rajasthan. A massive event and like a rock show taking place there. But who cares about the COVID third wave? <laughs> निर्धन व्यक्ति के ऐसा व्यक्ति के काम आए और उसकी जिंदगी बचे इससे बढ़िया तरीका जन्मदिन मनाने का है मेरी अगर आप वृक्षारोपण करते हैं पर्यावरण का संरक्षण करते हैं उससे बढ़िया चीज नहीं है मरीजों को फल वितरण करना गरीब के साथ गुजरना चाहिए जन्मदिन का काम और वो हमारा विभाग भी कर रहा है और कांग्रेस पार्टी के कार्यकर्ता In the parliament, there has been a massive uproar and in both houses of the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. The issue is one. 
It is the alleged Pegasus snooping by the government at the center. Papers were flung in the air in the Lok Sabha, which is the lower house of the parliament. That was done by the opposition members. They are demanding a discussion, not just a statement by the minister. Opposition members of parliament have raised Kela Hobe slogans in the lower house of the parliament, protesting against the Pegasus snoop gate and demanding judicial investigation. Congress member of parliament Rahul Gandhi even tore into the government over this specific issue, demanding a discussion. He just a short while ago addressed a press conference, along with other opposition netas, appearing to be a united opposition in the country. Rahul Gandhi led the charge, accused the government of crushing democracy by using the Pegasus spyware against politicians, activists, journalists, also asking the government to tell us simply if they bought the Pegasus or not. This came after at least 14 opposition parties even held a meeting today morning, remember, to strategize over their stand on the Pegasus snoop gate. But a face-off is escalating between the Bharatiya Janata Party at the center and the opposition members in the parliamentary IT committee. Because with the BJP member of parliament, Nishikan Dube is demanding the removal of the chairperson of the committee and the removal of the chairperson because the chairperson is Shashi Tharoor, the Congress Member of Parliament. This 32-member panel is scheduled to meet today. They are likely to question government officials on the snooping allegations and that is why the BJP MP is charging against Shashi Tharoor. If we have said that we will not do Pegasus on Pegasus and we will do something else on Pegasus, then Pegasus will be finished. पेगसस का उसके बाद कोई डिस्कशन नहीं हो सकता मगर जो पेगसस का मामला है वो हमारे लिए नेशनलिज्म का मामला है ट्रीजन का मामला है क्योंकि ये जो हथियार है ये लोकतंत्र के खिलाफ इस्तेमाल किया गया है ये प्रेवेसी का मामला नहीं मेरे लिए प्रेवेसी का मामला नहीं मेरे लिए ये एंटी नेशनल काम है ये जो हथियार है ये हिंदुस्तान के खिलाफ यूज किया गया है इस हथियार को आतंकवादियों के खिलाफ प्रयोग करना चाहिए देशद्रोहियों के खिलाफ प्रयोग करना चाहिए हम नरेंद्र मोदी जी से अमित शाह से यह पूछ रहे हैं कि आपने इस हथियार का प्रयोग हिंदुस्तान के लोकतांत्रिक इंस्टीट्यूशन के खिलाफ क्यों किया हिंदुस्तान के लोकतंत्र ने क्या किया है जो आपने इस हथियार को लोकतंत्र के खिलाफ यूज किया है ये सवाल है आपका जो काम है रिपोर्ट देना आज तक डिमांड्स ऑफ ग्रांट्स और एटीएन एक्शन टेकन नोट के अलावा जो है हमारी कमेटी ने कोई भी रिपोर्ट जिसके ऊपर के हमने डिस्कशन किया है दो साल से मिस्टर शशि थरूर ने उसको दिया नहीं है और शशि थरूर जी के कम से कम चार स्टेटमेंट को अभी दिया है कि ये कमेटी की मीटिंग होने के पहले उनके जो व्यूज हैं या कांग्रेस पार्टी के जो व्यूज हैं जो गलत व्यूज हैं जो झूठे व्यूज हैं उस व्यूज के बारे में आप अपना स्टेटमेंट जारी कर रहे हो आप स्पीकर के डायरेक्शन का भी वायलेशन कर रहे हो आनंद पटेल इज नाउ जॉइनिंग मी फ्रॉम आउटसाइड द पार्लियामेंट आनंद डिस्पाइट द रेनफॉल अ यूनाइटेड ऑपोजिशन देयर व्हिच आर द पार्टीज डू टेल अस पार्टिसिपेटेड इन इट एंड वन बाय वन वी कुड सी दैट दे वर वेरी डिफाइंड इन आस्किंग फॉर अ डिस्कशन ऑन द पेगासस well, Pooja, at least 14 opposition parties have come under the umbrella of uh, uh, Congress party and uh, they've started this uh, uh, protest against the government uh, very vehemently uh, because the government is not yielding to their demand over a discussion uh, on Pegasus stoop gate. Now, Rahul Gandhi addressed a press conference a little while ago. He was flanked by leaders from DMK, Shiv Sena, RJD, Ahmadmi Party, and our left parties, so they were all unanimous in their stand that the government must take up the discussion on Pegasus uh, because uh, there are serious questions which needs to be answered by the center. And that is the reason why we are seeing since yesterday uh, the opposition uniting and coming together on this yes. issue. Earlier on we had seen that the uh, opposition parties were giving separate adjournment motion notices, but now uh, the opposition leaders have decided that they will give a combined, a joint uh, adjournment motion okay. notice only on Pegasus. No other issues uh, they will be, uh, uh, you know, uh, giving the notices. But 
stick to Pegasus because they feel yes. that this is their moment and this is the issue on which they can corner the government in this session. All right, so despite the downpour, not just the politicians, Anand, you too, please take care of yourself in the downpour. Thank you for getting us that ground report as well. Anand Patel telling us about the opposition netas who have got together to ensure they corner the government on the Pegasus. While well, Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee is now eyeing a national role possibly through Mission 2024, there may be a chink in the opposition unity armour. Eyebrows are being raised. Feathers are ruffled after Mamata Banerjee's Trinamool Congress decided to skip two meetings of the United Opposition, which were attended by Congress MP Rahul Gandhi, in fact led by Rahul Gandhi in so many ways. Mayawati's Bahujan Samaj Party was also present in the first opposition huddle. But even the BSP skipped the second one in which arch-rival Samajwadi Party was present. However, Trinamool Congress sources are just claiming that the opposition is 100% united. Pegasus remains the top issue. But Mamata Banerjee, meanwhile, after the courtesy call with the Prime Minister Modi, is set to meet all the big opposition leaders. She wants to unite all the parties ahead of 2024 elections. So whether it is meeting one of her best friends in politics, Arvind Kejriwal, or Congress President Sonia Gandhi at her residence, which is meeting scheduled at 4.30 p.m. And then with Arvind Kejriwal, the meeting is scheduled at 6 p.m. today. The southern state of Karnataka finally gets a new chief minister. It is Lingayat leader Basavraj Bhumai who has been sworn in as the 23rd chief minister of Karnataka. Administered the oath by Governor Thavar Chand Gehlot at Raj Bhavan today at about 11 a.m. Bomai, interestingly, first touched the feet of B.S. Yadurapa just before he went up on the stage to take oath. Ahead of the swearing-in as well, he met former Chief Minister Yadurapa at the residence to take his blessings. Earlier in the morning, he went to the Bhagwan Sri Maruti Temple in Bengaluru. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, meanwhile, has congratulated Bomai, expressed his thanks also to outgoing Chief Minister Yadurapa for his contribution. The new Chief Minister, very importantly, will be heading directly to National Capital Delhi today to meet Bharatiya Janata Party Chief J.P. Nadda and Senior Leader of the Party and Defence Minister Rajnath Singh. Meanwhile, India Today has learnt that BJP is planning now to balance the caste equation by changing two out of three Deputy Chief Ministers in Karnataka. Names at the forefront are of R. Ashoka, who hails from the Vokaliga community, and Sri Ramulu, who is from the scheduled tribes. The third deputy CM, Govind Karjol, who is from the scheduled caste, will likely retain his position. So now leaving you with the visual of a happy family of Basavaraj Bhumai. Chief Minister Bomai's family celebrated the news last night of Bomai being named as the Chief Minister by singing a popular Kannada song called Nine Raj Kumar, which means you are the king now. That's the family celebrating as one of their own now is going to be Chief Minister of Karnataka. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>